Rhonda from the Clever Corvette Art and Art Workshops. Today we're going to do artwork that focuses on the idea of balance. So balance is something that we use in our world all the time, right? We uh, walk upright and if our shoes don't fit very well, then we're a little bit out of balance and we fall. Or if the ground is a little bit uneven, we fall. So we like it when things are well balanced so that it's a little bit easier to walk through this world, right? Well, in the art world, balance is used the same way. We like balance in our art so that we get this overall easiness or sense of ease when we look at the artwork. Balance helps us to feel like everything is all right. There's different ways to convey that sense of balance, four different ways actually, and we're going to look at that today. And you're gonna come up with some really unique designs on your own using these four different types of balance. So let's get started. So first let's look at symmetric balance. Symmetric balance is the easiest balance for us to understand. Let's imagine there's a seesaw here and we have one person sitting on this side and the person that's sitting on the other side is exactly the same. Maybe they're twins. They both weigh the same and they look the same and they make sure that seesaw is exactly even. So they're a mirror image of each other. When we do symmetrical art, we create an imaginary axis or an imaginary line. And then whatever we put on this side, we have to put the same thing on this side. It has to be the same size and filled in the same way. Now this is where things get tricky. If I do a line like this, I don't do another line like this. I have to do its mirror image. Everything has to be exactly the same, but a reflection of itself. So if I go out this way, this one has to go out this way. It's exact balance. We have a lot of things in nature that have exact symmetry, like um, butterflies. And the designs on butterflies are exactly even, right? Even leaves. Usually they're very close to being exact. There's a lot of stuff in nature that is symmetrical balance. But symmetrical balance in an art piece isn't about just a few things here and there that are exactly the same. We want the whole art piece to have symmetrical balance. So here's an example of a art piece that I created a couple years ago or a year ago that shows symmetrical balance. So there's that imaginary line and it runs right down the middle this way. So whatever I do on this side, I do the exact mirror image of it on this side. I added jewelry to it because this piece of jewelry was already symmetrical. It has this large gem on the right in the middle. If I cut it in half, it would be the exact same on both sides. And then those are the same, those are, those are, those are, and so forth. So symmetrical balance makes us feel when we look at an art piece, like it's just perfect. Everything is exactly as it should be. Now let's look at asymmetric balance. Let's look at that seesaw again. Well, the one twin is there, but the other one had to go to the store and buy some milk for their cereal for breakfast. <laughs> but there's two other smaller children that are close by. So these two children visually weigh the same as that person. 
So even though it doesn't look exactly the same, they weigh the same, so it creates a sense of balance. That's what asymmetrical balance is all about. It doesn't have to be an exact mirror image, but the weight is still enough that you get this overall sense of balance. This is the one that we see in our world most often. So here's an example of an art piece that I created a long time ago that has asymmetrical balance. So everything isn't exactly a mirror image. I have these leaves that are slowly floating down to the ground and they, they're they kind of in the center of the page, but they're not exact. They kind of randomly float down the page, but we still get this sense of equality, this sense of evenness. If one of these leaves was way over here, then it would just be a little bit too off, unless I had another leaf way over here or up there. So even though it's not an exact mirror image, when we look at this, overall, it gives us this sense of balance. Radial balance is even more different than symmetrical and asymmetrical balance. Instead of being on a seesaw, let's imagine that we are on a merry-go-round. And each person on the merry-go-round has their own bar, right? That they hold on to. Here are the bars that everybody's holding on to. And everybody that's sitting in their space on the merry-go-round is exactly the same. Maybe there's some people standing outside of the merry-go-round as well. And they're exactly the same. Maybe their arms are out. See what I'm doing here? In every section of this merry-go-round, it's exactly the same. Nothing is different. So if one of these is colored in, all of them in each section will be colored in. This is the most exciting and fun type of balance to create. It has a lot of energy and it's a little bit explosive and it radiates out from this center point. And you can do a lot of fun things in each section for radial balance. You just have to remember that whatever you do in one, it has to be exactly the same in each one of them. Here's an example of radial balance art that I created some time ago. So you can see how things are repeated over and over again four times. So here's one whole section here with a lupus flower and the spirally arms and the dots and they're all exactly the same, radiating out. So this is one whole section. And then this is one, and this is one, and this is one. Radial art is really fun to create. And there's a lot of things, again, in nature that show radial balance, like flowers. Look at how they all radiate out from a central point. And you could create so many unique different kinds of flowers, right? Sun, the sun, of course, radiates out and so forth. So you can have a lot of fun creating radial balance designs. Crystallographic balance is the last type of balance that's used in artwork. Now, basically, crystallographic balance is used all the time. What it is, is patterns that are repeated over and over and over again to create this sense of balance and equality. Now, crystallographic balance can sometimes seem kind of boring, but it is used in artwork a lot for backgrounds, for wallpaper, for clothing, um, 
tablecloths, curtains, bedspreads, and so forth. So we just cre create this pattern over and over and over again. And when it covers the whole page, it creates a sense of balance. So this is why I chose to wear this, wear this dress today. Look at the patterns on here. It's just repeated over and over and over again. That's crystallographic balance. If you go to your closet right now and you start to look at your clothing, you're going to see that there's different patterns on your clothes that are repeated over and over and over again. And that's a sense of balance. Now I'm gonna share with you some artwork that was done by a former student of mine many, many years ago. So in this sketch, he did symmetrical balance. So he drew a really light line here and then he just played with shapes and lines to create this interesting design. He didn't have anything specific in mind that he wanted to create. He just wanted to play with whatever is on this side. He'll do the same thing on that side. And he used something called monochromatic color theory. So one color and shades of those colors to get this really interesting design. And he used just purples. That's really fun. And then he played with asymmetrical design. Look at how it's different but the same. There's this overall sense of visual weight. So things are balanced out by, for example, this area here is a large shape. So he kind of made a similar shape, but he really filled it in with a lot of circles. He had a lot of fun playing with different line varieties and whatever he did on this side, he just made sure he put the same amount of weight on that side. For his radial balance design, you can see how everything starts to radiate out and he repeated his design over and over again. What happened is he ran out of room so he couldn't put this everywhere that he wanted to. If this was a larger piece of paper, these designs would have been repeated in these areas as well. But it has an overall sense of balance. And look what he did here for crystallographic balance. Coffee cup and spoon, coffee cup and spoon, just repeated over and over and over again. It's rhythm, it's repetitive, and it is crystallographic balance. So, did you do your own doodles? Did you play with the four different types of balance? Symmetrical balance, asymmetrical balance, radial balance, and crystallographic balance? I hope so, because now you're going to take that thinking and we're going to do something super fun with it. It's beautiful outside because it's spring. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to put on some shoes, a warm jacket if it's a little bit windy out, I want you to get a plastic container of some kind or a shopping bag, anything that is going to hold stuff. And then I want you to go and take a walk in nature. Maybe you'll have to go with a parent or an older sibling or a chaperone of some kind because you want to be safe. But I want you to get outdoors and I'm going to show you what we're going to be doing out there. Are you ready? Let's go outside. We're really, really lucky to live here in Northwestern Ontario. Yeah, it might be a little bit cold, but we are surrounded by nature, basically right outside our door. It's not hard to get close to trees and all of the different things that can be found in our natural environment. So let's start looking and picking. So I'm out here in the wilderness, and I'm picking things so that I can make some environmental art and I can also exemplify the four different types of balance. It's a lot here for me to gather. Hmm, I'm gonna really start to explore what is on the ground. I see sticks and pine cones and even little spruce boughs. I think I can use this stuff. So I've collected a variety of things in this bin and I'm going to try to do some art with it. I've got rocks and sticks, pine cones, spruce boughs, birch bark that was on the ground. You never harvest birch bark from a, a living tree. Some club moss, some Labrador tea leaves, 
And maybe I'll pick some other things up along the way. But I think I'm ready to rock and roll. I found this beautiful bed of moss here. So I think I'm going to use this kind of as my background. So let's take a closer look at this symmetrical design. You can see that this is my center line that I've created. Everything kind of runs along there and whatever I put on one side, the same thing goes on the other side, except in an opposite angle, just like a mirror image. So if I were to take this pine cone and put it in that direction, that would not be symmetrical balance. This is my center line here, and everything has to be a reflection from that center line. So that's what makes this a symmetrically balanced design. So now let's try to make an asymmetrical design, remembering that when it's asymmetrical, it has to have the same visual weight, but it doesn't have to be a mirror image. Let me show you what I mean by that. So let's take a closer look at this asymmetrical design. So there doesn't need to be an axis. You don't need a middle part as long as you have the same amount of weight. So an easy way to do this is just count the amount of items that you place and make sure that regardless of how random they are, it still has a little bit of weight. So I made sure that I had the same amount of spruce boughs clustered together here, and then I have the same amount clustered there. I have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of club moss with three randomly placed there and three randomly placed there. I did a cluster of five pine cones here, and then I scattered the other five. There's two pieces of birch bark. There's another two pieces here. And then I just randomly scattered rocks throughout the art piece to give it a sense of asymmetrical balance. Now we're gonna look at my favorite type of balance, radial balance. Radial balance starts in the center and radiates out, kind of like the spokes on a wheel or the lines that you see in the segments of a slice of orange. Let me show you what I mean. Let's take a closer look at radial design. You can see how it's broken into one, two, three, four, five sections. And in each section, there's exactly the same thing. So there's in each section, two pine cones, one balsam bough, a club moss and a rock and they're separated by sticks. And they're all set up in exactly the same way. That's what makes it radial balance. The final type of balance that Willow and I are gonna talk about today is crystallographic balance. And if you remember, do you remember Willow? It's like a pattern. So just like my hat has stripes, they go black, green, black, green. My jacket has a pattern of plaid. Anything that's a pattern is still balanced. It's used a lot in bed sheets, clothing. Um, I don't know what else. There's lots of different things. That, wallpaper, wallpaper has crystallographic balance, doesn't it, Willow? So let's take a look at what crystallographic balance would look like in nature. Willow has decided to sit in my spot that I'm doing my artwork. So I'm going to just let her have a little break here and then I'll continue on with my art project. Hey Willow, she's having a little rest. take a closer look at this crystallographic balance. You can see I separated each section with sticks and then my pattern went spruce bough, club foot, spruce bough, club foot, spruce bough, and then I put rocks in between each of those items and I put a pine cone on top of every little spruce bough. So it creates an overall pattern and that is crystallographic balance. So while I was making this video, a fox walked by. 
That's what happens when you go out into nature. The little fox kept its distance and I kept my distance and I just said, eh, go away, fox. <laughs> so Willow and I would really love to see what kind of balanced designs you come up with with the things that you collect in nature. And if you think about it, you can get different types of artwork at different times of year because you can pick flowers or weeds. You can make a whole art piece with dandelions using the flowers, using the stems, using the leaves, even the roots. There's so many options when you start to explore your natural world, right? And it's lucky us right outside our door. So I hope that you had fun. Uh, I'd love to see your art pieces, so you can always send them to me. Uh, my Facebook page is the Clever Corvids Art and Art Workshops with Rhonda Beckman. You can find me on YouTube, of course, and you can email. There's all kinds of different ways you can get in touch with me. Have a great day. Think art. <laughs>